America is big. Like, really, really big. In a country that spans the width of an entire continent with over 300 million people, there's bound to be some differences. And you don't have to look very far from them either. Just look at the Civil War, for example. Hi, my name is Andre Dutra, and on this channel, we talk about history, media, and culture. In this video, I will be discussing American regional stereotypes. Boing. Both fair and unfair. In this video, I'll be discussing stereotypes of Americans by region. I wanted to also cover stereotypes of Americans overall, but I think that's going to be left over for a different video. A lot of these stereotypes also come with their own unique accents that you'll get to watch me butcher throughout the course of the video, so stay tuned for that. The website tvtropes.org was very useful to me in my research for this video, so make sure to check them out. They'll be linked down below. I'll also try to give at least one fictional or real life example for each stereotype. I also wanted to say that by definition, stereotypes are oversimplifications of different groups. With that being said, some of these might be offensive or uncomfortable to speak about. Please remember that nothing in this video is an endorsement of any sort of stereotype, and the whole point of this video is to just open up conversation around them. The valley girl slash surfer dude is a very common stereotype in American media. These are both stereotypes that often use words such as like, totally, and whatever. Oh my god, dude, this is like such an unfair stereotype. This is like totally not radical, man. Oh my god, what are you even saying? This is like so unfair. Both of these started out as sort of caricatures of Southern California teenagers that were really common in American media from the 80s and 90s. But they've both escalated to signify other things, so much so that characters that embody these stereotypes often aren't even from California anymore. These sort of characters are often portrayed as popular and physically attractive, but not very intelligent. In the case of the surfer dude, he's usually portrayed as being very laid back, often to his own detriment. Good examples of this would be Bill and Ted, Crash from Finding Nemo, and Michelangelo from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In the case of the Valley Girl, good examples would be Jackie from that 70s show, who's from Wisconsin, not California, Kim Kardashian, and Elle Woods from Legally Blonde. Elle Woods is a particularly fun example of this because she subverts expectations and is actually a very smart and capable person. I love subversions like this, so let me know if any of them come to mind in the comments below. Now let's jump over to the East Coast for our next stereotype, the rude New Yorker. This archetype is very similar to that of people from Jay-Z and is often applied to Italian Americans in particular because there's a large population of them in the tri-state area. This archetype can be applied to anything from a rude cab driver to Tony Soprano and everything in between. These sort of characters are often portrayed as being very tough, very proud, and very prone to they also tend to talk with the standard sort of New York vowel sounds in their accents. Oh man, what are you talking about? This is a very unfair stereotype. I'm walking here. I'm so sorry. Good examples of this can often be found in mafia movies and TV shows. Any character played by Joe Pesci or Robert De Niro probably fits this stereotype pretty well, along with the aforementioned Tony Soprano. I think a really fun example of this is Mario, who's been portrayed as having a very strong sort of New York accent in movies and TV shows. Where are we? I got a feeling we're not in Brooklyn no more. I find it very interesting that the new movie starring Chris Pratt seems to be going in a different direction voice-wise. This sort of stereotype can also apply to Irish people from Boston. I find that those two stereotypes get grouped together a lot. I parked the car in Harvard Yard. Over the years, this sort of stereotype has evolved to encompass other marginalized communities as well. The modern day Black and Latino population of the city have also been portrayed with a similar sort of accent and demeanor in American media. I think that Cardi B's accent and personality are very reflective of her Bronx roots and what we typically associate with that neighborhood in the media. I also find it interesting when rappers from the 90s like Nas, Biggie, and Jay-Z use this sort of Italian-American mafioso imagery to portray themselves as a boss or gangster in the more traditional sense. This reminds me of a stupid and frankly quite racist meme that shows mob boss Al Capone alongside a group of young black men that reads, These were the real gangsters, now pull up your damn pants. As if this group of gang members is better than another group of gang members because one wore a suit and one didn't. It's definitely not because of race. I'm sure this has nothing to do with that. 
The next trope on our list is that of the nice Midwesterner. This trope is interesting because it's a little bit of an overlooked one, much like the Midwest itself. This sort of portrayal applies more to people from the northern Midwest in particular. These portrayals are very similar to that of Canadians, both in accent and in demeanor. Oh shucks, don't you know, I don't like this portrayal very much. These characters are often portrayed as being very nice. So nice, in fact, that they're usually treated like doormats. They usually have some sort of Scandinavian last name, as many people in the region are often of Scandinavian descent. This is a reminder that stereotypes are often pretty mean-spirited. There's not a great way to say it. The Midwestern stereotype just kind of makes them look dumb. And that's why stereotypes are usually pretty bad and why there's something that we should talk about more often. For a good example of the stereotype, you can look at anyone from the movie Fargo. For the final geographic region of the video, we're going to be talking about the South, which is a very loaded area. I could probably make an entire video on just stereotypes of the South by itself, and I might do that later on, but for the sake of today's video, I'm going to try to stick to just one. The most obvious one is probably the stereotype of the stupid redneck, but honestly that seems a little too obvious to me, so I decided to cover something else in this video. The two southern stereotypes that I want to discuss are the southern belle and its counterpart, the southern gentleman. These are both relics of the highly controversial antebellum era of the American South. This era describes a highly romanticized period of prosperity in the 19th century before the outbreak of the Civil War. Obviously, this period was more prosperous for some people than others. This time frame is well known for its French influence, emphasis on agriculture, and of course, slavery. The Southern Belle is portrayed as a rich and intelligent young woman who is well-trained socially and has great manners. This term might have a very different definition in a modern setting, as it could be a highly intelligent Southern girl living outside of the South who is still very proud of her Southern roots. In a modern setting, this stereotype really depends on whether the Southern Belle is portrayed as still being in the South or whether they're portrayed as being in some big city elsewhere. In another contradictory definition, it could also be a Southern girl who is portrayed as being sort of naive, but also very sweet. A good example of the classic Southern Belle would be Charlotte from The Princess and the Frog, while a good example of the modern Southern Belle would be Brenda Johnson from The Closer. I probably shouldn't even try to do the Southern Belle holes, but here I am doing it anyway. The Southern Belle's counterpart is, of course, the Southern Gentleman. A dapper, intelligent, and mostly polite figure usually characterized by his trademark facial hair, smoking device, and often racism. We usually have a very long Southern drawl in our voices. Very deep and very calm. This is a figure that's often associated with lost cause revisionism and a romanticization of the pre-Civil War South. Your own perceptions of this archetype are probably a good litmus test for your political leanings overall. This is just my best analysis of it. Feel free to disagree with it in the comments below. A good example of this would be the dreadful slave owner Calvin Candy from Django Unchained. Candy is a facade of class and politeness with an underlying cruelty and disregard for other humans. Lives. An interesting contemporary representation of the stereotype would be Benoit Blanc from Knives Out. He certainly ticks the more desirable qualities of the Southern gentleman, but without the racism. They also went as far as to give him a male husband in the sequel film Last Onion to further contrast him from his original archetype. Knives Out goes out of its way to compare Blanc to Colonel Sanders, who himself is a controversial representation of this archetype. In coming up with this script, I briefly forgot that Sanders was actually a real person, and I was ready to talk about him as if he were just another brand mascot. After Papa John's founder, John Shatner, found himself in controversy for saying the N-word, he complained that Colonel Sanders used to say the N-word all the time that he never got in any trouble for it. Sanders' family denied the accusation, and regardless of whether it's true or not, it's still interesting to see this figure who might have somewhat of a problematic past be such a popular mascot of a worldwide fast food chain. 
I'm by no means saying get rid of Colonel Sanders necessarily. I don't really know enough about the matter personally to really have a formed opinion. All that I'm saying is that it's an interesting conversation. I wanted to touch on the Southwest and the Pacific Northwest in this video, but those are the two areas of the United States that I haven't been to personally, and they're also the two areas that I'm the least familiar with. Maybe in a future video I could touch on them, but right now I'm just not confident that I really know enough about them to do them justice. I'm getting a strange feeling that there's another one that I might have left out as well. Oh no! He's coming for me! He's coming for me! He's coming for me! I want to leave you with the question, what are some American regional stereotypes that come to your mind? Maybe I left some out. Let me know what you think could apply to the Southwest or the Pacific Northwest or even some of the regions that I already talked about. Look out for the Florida Man video. That's one that I'm really excited for as well. Consider leaving a like and subscribing down below as it really does help a smaller channel like myself. If you're feeling extra generous, I also have a PayPal link where you can make donations. Any donation at all would be very, very appreciated.